Welcome to my top 10 game changing tips in Excel. You can easily get a unique values from your data set in Microsoft 365 using a unique function like this. Likewise, in Google Sheet, you can use the unique function like this as well. However, in Excel standalone application, unique function is not available. These are the two ways to get unique values from your data set in the Excel standalone application. The first method is to use advanced filter. Make sure you're on a data tab, sort and filter, and advanced. In here, you're going to select copy to another location. This is your data set. And copy to, I'm going to start with B1 here. And unique record, I'm going to put a check here and click on OK. The second method is to use index match. Let me undo this. Select your cell B2 here to start off with and press F2 to enter the cell edit mode and use this formula. After that, once you enter this formula, press Control Shift and Enter to make it into an array output like this. Make sure you have a curly braces here as you can see in my formula. You don't really see it here if you press F2, but if you look at this formula here, you see a curly braces here. Once that's done, scroll all the way down or drag all the way down the cell formula and you'll get unique values as well. And to get the number of occurrence, you simply use this formula. Let me reorganize my table here. You can simply use this formula like that and then apply to every row. Here is how you achieve a crosshair cell highlighting effect like this where both row and column is highlighted where the cell is selected. So first of all, let's select the whole data set by pressing Ctrl A. And after that, go home, style, conditional formatting, new rule. Over here, you'll be using use formula. And this is the formula you'll be using today. Once you enter the formula, click on format. Make sure you're on the fill tab. And let's say I'm gonna select blue and click OK and OK one more time. You can see now your row is highlighted but there's no animation quite yet. So next thing we're going to do is to set up the highlight for the column. Control A to select your whole data set again if it's not selected. Home, Style, Conditional Formatting, New Rule one more time. Use Formula and this is the formula we'll be using. Once you enter that formula, click on Format Make sure you're on a fill tab again. I'm going to use the same color, blue, and click on OK. And OK one more time. As you can see, column is highlighted right now, but there's again no animation. Let's introduce animation by right clicking on the sheet and click View Code. In this View Code, you're going to select Worksheet from the pull down menu and enter the following command target.calculate. Once that's done, Press Ctrl S to save your VBA code and close your VBA editor. Now, if you were to click anywhere on the cell, you can see that the crosshair will follow wherever you go. If you want to hide your formula, like this formula is here, hidden from users, and at the same time prevent people from making changes to your spreadsheet like this, this is how you do it. Let's first and foremost of all remove lock and hidden feature from every cell. Press Ctrl A and Ctrl 1. Make sure you're on the protection tab and remove the check mark from lock and hidden and click OK. Now every cell has lock and hidden disabled. Now to enable only the formulas, you press Ctrl G and then click on special and click on formulas. Lift all these check box as it is and click OK. What this does is that it selects only the formulas on your spreadsheet. Now press Control 1, make sure you're in protection tab again, and reinstate lock and hidden and click OK. Now if you were to try to edit it, you'll still be able to edit your formula because your protection hasn't been enabled yet. So to enable the protection, go on Review and then go Protect Sheet and click OK. Now I try to do the same thing again here. You can see that you cannot make changes to any of your formula. However, you can make changes to the rest of the cell like this. But if you want to only allow the user to view the formula at the same time lock like this, this is how I do it. Go ahead and unprotect your sheet now and let's select your formula cells only by pressing Ctrl G, 
special formula and click OK. Now press Ctrl 1 and remove the hidden and click OK. Make sure in review again, protect sheet and click OK. Now you can see that the user can see the formulas but if the user try to edit the formula like this, you'll get this error message here like that. But if you want the user to be able to edit the formula cell but hide the formula, this is how you do it. Let's unprotect the sheet here and press Ctrl G special formula and OK to select all the formula cells only. Next, you're going to press Ctrl 1 and flip the checkbox like this. You're going to hide the formula but you can allow the user to edit the cell. Let's click OK. And if you go review, protect sheet and click OK, now you can see that the formulas are all hidden out of sight from the users. But the user can start editing the cell. This is how you compare two lists and identify individuals who are present on the original list but is missing on the second list. This is the formula equal filter open parenthesis the very first list comma not count if open parenthesis and then followed by the second list comma the first list and you're gonna close it with three parentheses like this and hit enter. In Excel, you can view autocomplete lists by using the alternate and the down key. This will give you the list of all the items that's found on column B. This is the same list that Excel uses when you do autocomplete. If I type pair, you can see it automatically completes it for you. I also use this for when I have a question saying, let's say, a fruit starting with B. I press Alt down and you can see they're in alphabetical order and I select any fruit that starts with B. Another use case of autocomplete list is to do a spell check. Let's say for example, if you go down and select C and you press F7 here, you can see that Excel says that all your spellings are good. But if you go here and select Alt, arrow down, you can see there's some spelling mistakes here. What you do after that to fix it will be Control H. And in here, you're going to type your error spelling and then follow by that and click OK. And five replacement has been made. And that's how you correct the spelling mistakes as well with this. Autocomplete list does not work on columns with numbers. Like for example, if we go here and press alternate down here, you see it doesn't show anything in here. If you have enable filter on your table, you can also use the same hotkey. Let's say I'm going to press Control shift l to enable filter on my header. Over here, you select your header and press alternate down. It will show you your filter context menu. Here's how you can create a feature in Excel that highlights the row containing the relevant text that you have entered. And to top it off, sort the table so that the highlighted row is always at the top. Let's start off by highlighting the row first. Click anywhere on your table and press Ctrl A. This will highlight the whole table for you. Click on Home tab and make sure you're in Style and Conditional Formatting, New Rule. In this new rule here, you're going to use Formula and this is the formula you'll be using. Next, click on Format, make sure you're on the Fill tab, and select the color that you want to highlight the row with. I'm going to say I'm going to highlight with yellow, and click OK, and click OK. Next, go to the cell E1 here, and after that, enter maybe a text called FO and hit Enter. And if you scroll down, you'll see any of this title that has an FO in it will be highlighted. Let's say try DHE as in the, you can see any of those titles with the the will be highlighted. Next, let's sort the table so that the highlighted row is always at the top. Select anywhere on your table and press Ctrl Shift L to enable filter. Now go to developer. If your developer tab is not available, right click anywhere on the ribbon and click on customize the ribbon. And then make sure that the check mark is available next to the developer and click OK. I already have my developer tab on here. So the next thing I have to do is click record macro and then give the macro a name and click OK. After that, click the filter. After that, select sort by color and select the yellow color, which is your highlighting color. And after that, stop your macro recording. Once that's done, you have to create a button to sort. So click on insert, you're still in the developer button and then draw a button 
somewhere on your spreadsheet and associate the action of the button with a macro one which you just created and click OK. Once that's done, click anywhere on the spreadsheet. If for some reason this thing is turned on like that, make sure you click on it to disable it. Now, if you type say AM and hit enter, you can see they are not sorted yet, but if you click the button, you can see that the highlighted row is always at the top. Here's the SH and button. You can see that the sorted highlighted rows are always sorted at the top. The last feature I want to add would be to be able to enter alphabet like that and the table highlight by itself without me having to press an enter key like this. So to do that, you're going to have to introduce a new control called text box. Under develop, control, insert. Under ActiveX control, there's a text box here. And let's drop a text box somewhere on here. Next, you're going to right click on the text box and click on property from the context menu. Now you're going to link this text box to this cell E1. So under link cell, you're going to press E1 like this and hit enter. And we're going to make this text box looks exactly like a cell. So we're going to go border style here and going to change it to border style single. And this border color here, you're going to change it to scroll bar. And then once that's done, let's close this. And now you can see it looks exactly like a cell. So what you do is that uh, just as a test, let's click the design mode. So if you type anything in here, you can see the table dynamically changes as soon as you make any of those changes on your spreadsheet. So the final thing is the cosmetic thing. Click on design again. And now you can drag as soon as you click on design and overlay it on top of the cell E1. Now click the design mode as off. And now as soon as you enter any characters, let's say the, you see how the tables get highlighted by itself as soon as I enter anything. And of course, your sort button, you click on it, it will sort it for you. All right, from your data set, let's find out the good actors and the bad actors uh, in terms of three most popular shoe sold and three least popular shoe sold. And to complete the statistics, we'll find the three most expensive shoes in store. So starting off with three most popular shoes sold, this is the formula that you need to use. The first argument on the filter is the whole data set, the red ones. Uh, the quantity sold and I'm using the function called large number five here pertains to column E minus one means descending order let's hit enter and there you go this is the most popular shoe sold on the store let's do it the top three least popular shoe and this is the formula that you use as you can see I'm using the function called small here so so that I can get the least popular and number five means column five as in E. And I'm using positive one here to indicate ascending order. So I'm gonna hit enter here, and you can see this is the least shoe sold on my data set. And to top it off, uh, we'll do the top three most expensive shoe in store. And there you have it, the three tables here. So let's do a quick analysis on what this uh, table does from this three simple formula. You can see that the most expensive shoe, this one here, is one of the least sold shoe in my table here. You can see uh, mainly because uh, maybe the price is too high. So management might want to revisit the price point for this product here. And from this uh, first table here on top here, you can see that uh, it shows that the price point of uh, $100 here for a shoe could be an optimal price point for many clients. So it's something to take a note of. In my camping checklist, if I put a Y here, it will highlight the whole row indicating that I've already packed this item. This kind of technique can also be used for things like shopping lists or to-do lists. So let's get started. The first thing I have to do is to highlight the data set by clicking the area that you want, only this without the title header. Next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna be Home, Style, Conditional Formatting, and click on New Rules. In here, you'll be selecting Use a Formula, and the formula you'll be using will be this. Click on the formula here and click on cell C2. You'll come up with equal dollar C dollar two. You're gonna press F4 twice like this so that it looks like dollar C2 like this. And you're gonna say equal double quote capital Y double quote. Once that's done, click on format button here 
and make sure you are on the field tabs here and select the color that you want see I'm gonna select a color called this kind of color here and click on OK and OK one more time now every time when I press Y here like this you can see that the whole row is highlighted this is a good way to keep track of all the items that I want to bring for my camping trips or maybe for my shopping as well If you want to automatically add borders on your table as you add more records to your data set like this, this is how you do it. First, place your cursor on the very first row of the very first cell, like for example, mine will be A2 here, and then press Control Shift, right arrow key. Keep holding your Control Shift and press down arrow key twice like this. What it does is selects all the data sets on column A, B, and C, and it looks like that. Once that's done, you make sure you're on Home tab here, under Style, conditional formatting new rule and then you're going to select use formula click on this formula section and select the cell A2 which is the very first row cell right click on it it comes up like that and press F4 twice one two and make sure it looks like a dollar A2 as a reference like this and you're going to use a not equal to sign by using the less than and greater than sign and you're going to put double quote twice like this to indicate blank once that's done click on format Make sure you're on Borders tab here, and then click on Outline, OK, and OK one more time. Now, every time you add a new row, like for example, let's say like that, you can see that Excel is creating a brand new border with me, where I add more records in my data set. This is how we create a simple data entry tool where you can enter data on this cell here. Well, let's call it a data entry cell. And you have a button here. When you click this button, this data entry data get end up in your database or your table below. First, click on developer tab. If this developer tab is not available, right click anywhere on your ribbon here and select customize the ribbon. And in this Excel option pop-up window here, click on Customize Ribbon if it's not selected yet. And make sure that your developer is checked. Once that's done, click OK and your developer tab should be available. And then next thing you have to do is to click on Record Macro. Give it a name. I'm going to call it Macro 17 and click on OK. The first thing you're going to have to do is to select the very first row on your table like this. And then press Ctrl, Shift, Plus and select shift cell down and click OK. What this does is that it inserts a new row for you. Next, you select the data entry cell like this. Press Ctrl C to copy the clipboard and then select A10, the very first row on your table. Right click and then select transpose from the context menu like this and select it. What it does is that it uh, copies the data entry data into the very first row. Now you're going to copy the format select the second row like this and then go to home clipboard format painter and then next thing you have to do is click on a10 so that the new row looks exactly like the second row once that's done go to your developer and stop your recording you can also stop recording from here if you like once the recording is st stopped let's insert a new button so that you can click on it and add a new row go click on insert and you'll be selecting this button here and insert the button by just drag dropping the button and associate the button's action with macro 17 which we just created and click OK and now every time you press button 7 or your insert button you can see whatever you have entered in here get added to your database here On my YouTube channel, I regularly share Excel tips and tricks every day. Make sure you subscribe to stay updated.